the word you hear that cleanses your mind when your mind has been cleansed your life is holy if you are not taught who christ is you cannot live an effective christian life there is no other honor greater than that of sonship worldliness is the trap that enslaves men to the devil relationship with god is a gift fellowship is a choice the true expression of divine love is forgiveness to others what you pursue is an expression of what you desire wives likewise be submissive to your own husbands that even if some do not obey the word they without a word may be won by the conduct of their wives verse 2 when they observe your chaste conduct accompanied by fear that's the fear of god your beauty should not come from outward adornment such as braided hair and the wearing of gold jewelry and fine cloth verse 4 instead it should be that of your inner self the unfading beauty of what a gentle and quiet spirit which is of great worth in god's sight a what instead it should be that of your inner self the unfading beauty of a gentle and quiet spirit which is of a great worth in god's sight uh -huh. now verse 5 everybody read for this is the way the holy women of the past who put their hope in god who no which kind of women the holy women of the past who put their hope in god used to make themselves beautiful they were submissive to their own husband verse 6 follow now like sarah who obeyed abraham and called him her master you are her daughters if you do what is right and do not give way to fear stop there daughters of sarah hallelujah he said you are her daughters if you do what is right glory be to god hallelujah say i am a daughter of sarah say i am a daughter of sarah glory be to god this scripture is the most important counsel or advice or instruction from god to women you cannot fully express your 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 ability as a woman if you don't have understanding of the purpose of your creation it is the understanding of purpose that provoke the enjoyment of ability if you don't know why you were created you will never fulfill the reason for your existence so as a woman you must ask yourself why was i born a woman there is a reason you did not become a woman by your choice or the choice of your parent it is a choice of god so if god proposed that you should come on earth and exist in the body of a woman there is a reason so you cannot fulfill the reason for your existence if you don't understand the purpose for your creation are you following me here so but to understand the purpose of your creation you need to go back right to genesis to understand everything now the man of god says that you should be daughters of sarah why there are two mothers in scripture eve and sarah he doesn't want you to be daughters of eve he wants you to be daughters of sarah because Eve is the one through whom the curse came upon mankind. But Sarah is the one through whom the promise of redemption came upon mankind. That is why when Abraham had a child with Hagar and he thought that was the heir of, the, of, of his property, God said, no, it is the woman that Sarah will give you that will be the heir and the one that will represent the Christ. That is why if you study scripture Christ comes from Isaac so if Sarah does not bring forth Isaac there is no Christ when every promise that God gave Abraham 
they could only be fulfilled when Sarah brings forth Isaac. But Eve brought the curse. Sarah brought the blessing. So, from this scripture, God wants you to know who should be your example. If you study scripture, you will understand that one of the, the problem of Eve was she did not submit to her husband. If Eve was submissive to Adam, when Satan asked her to do what God said they should not do, she will not have done it. She will have asked him first. Are you understanding me? Because God said, don't eat from the tree. God did not tell Eve. God told Adam. Adam told Eve. That this is what God is. When you were not here, God instructed me that we should not eat from this tree. Now, Eve goes, to the, goes before the tree and the serpent tells her to eat. Normally, she has to go and inquire from her husband that there is a different revelation from what you told me. Should I do it or not? The strength of a married woman is her submission to her husband. If Eve had just asked Adam, this is what I'm hearing, should I eat? They would have eaten. Are you following me here? So, God says, I don't want Eve to be your example. In Christ, every woman is a daughter of Sarah, not of Eve. And there is a benefit of being identified as a daughter of Sarah because Sarah is known as a woman that was identified by her faith. She is the only woman that brought forth a child at 90 years. It means no daughter of Sarah can be barren. No one. No daughter of Sarah can be unmarried. Because say when Sarah was 75, she entered Egypt. He said, and the king left all the young girls. Even Abraham had to lie that Sarah is his sister because he knew that the king would take her. Which kind of man is afraid that they will snatch a woman of 70 years old? Unless that woman has something that is greater than other women. So there was something about Sarah. There was something that made her the light of her world. Everywhere Sarah went to, she became the attention of the town. So much that she entered Egypt and the king left the palace, came and took her for a wife. She left Egypt, went to another country. Another king called Abimelech, still came and took her. Two times in two different countries. 70 years, 75 years. Men were still running after her. It means she possessed something that did not fade away with time. That though she was in the physical age of 75, her youth, her youth was renewed by the spirit of holiness in her. So God says, I want you to be a daughter of Sarah so you cannot partake of the blessing of Sarah if you don't identify yourself to God by the obedience of Sarah. If you must enjoy the blessings that Sarah enjoyed from God, you must identify yourself to God by your obedience as a daughter of Sarah. Question, whose daughter are you? Are you the daughter of Eve or the daughter of Sarah? Glory be to God. Now, throughout the place we read from, God began to describe what it means to be a daughter of Sarah. He described right from verse 2 right to verse 4 that we saw. And he spoke of some certain, the greatest thing he said. He said, let not your beauty come from your outward appearance. But let it come from your innermost spirit of a gentle and a quiet spirit that is of great value in the sight of God. It means the value of a woman before God is her character, not her face. God does not value you by your face or by your dressing. He values you by the content of your heart. He said, let not your beauty. We live in a time where the people of the world have placed so more emphasis on acceptance, on on outward appearance. Matter of fact, to be accepted in this world today, you must look the way the world wants. 
<laughs> if you dress in a way that is not like the way others are dressing, they say, what do you want to prove? But in 1 Samuel chapter 16 verse 7, God said to Samuel, he said, God does, he said, God does not look the way man look. For man look at the outward appearance, but God looks at the hearts. So if you must be approved before God, what recommends you to God is your heart, not your face. With this understanding, every woman that wants to be identified as a daughter of Sarah will work more on her character than her appearance. We put more emphasis. If the three hours you spend to paint your face, if you take the three hours and pray and worship God, God says you are of more value if your, if your character pleases me. Are you a daughter of Eve or a daughter of Sarah? Whose daughter are you? So, when we see that place, we understand that God begins to describe her from the qualities of her heart. We read Job chapter 1. When God and Satan were arguing about Job, God said to Satan, have you seen my servant Job? He's a man who fears me, number one. A man who fears me. So, what, what, what pleased God in the life of Job was the character of job the fear of god and satan said does job fear you for nothing have you not given him um, houses and women and wife and children look at this when god looked at job he saw his character when satan looked at job he saw his possession a daughter of sarah is identified by her character not her appearance yes there's something about appearance but we'll talk about that is the heart people of God there is great blessing for a woman when she's identified as a daughter of Sarah Sarah was not at 90 years old she brought forth at 75 men were still not any kind of man kings Abraham married her. Abraham was a king. She entered a country. A king came after her. She left that country. Entered Egypt. Another king came. What was upon Sarah that attracted only kings? God told us in 1 Peter 3. He said what was her beauty came from inside, not from outside. Glory be to the Father. So, God described her according to her heart. If you study Proverbs 31 verse 10 He say a virtuous woman Who can find A woman, a virtuous woman Speak of a woman of noble character The scripture says He said a virtuous woman Who can find Then in the verse That's Proverbs 31 verse 10 He say a virtuous woman who can find And he begins to describe the woman In verse 30 he says He says beauty is passing Charm is fading, but a woman that fears the Lord shall be praised. Shall be, shall be praised. One of the greatest things that women face is on acceptance from their husband. If you want your husband to praise you, Bible says, fear the Lord. That's scripture. Why? Once a woman fears God, God makes a husband to praise her. The only way you can submit God, your husband to God is to submit yourself to him. <laughs> I wish I was talking to somebody here. He says, a woman that fears God shall be praised. So God says, there are beautiful women. He says, there are many beautiful women, but you surpass them all. Charm is fading. Beauty is passing. But a woman that fears God shall be praised. And we saw from scripture, he said the daughters of Sarah, they have a fear of God. So, the first thing about the daughter of Sarah is that these are women that fear God. What is number one? There are women that do what? There are women that do what? There are women that do what? They fear God. The fear of God is, 
is 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 um, how can I put it simple? The fear of God is what disciplines a woman to live in holiness. I didn't say the fear of a, of a man. The fear of God. Not the fear of man. The fear of God. No woman should fear any man. Not even a husband. That would say submit to your husband. Not fear him. The first sign about a daughter of Sarah, she is a woman that fears God. She fears God. The fear of God is your rest is when you respond to God's word by obedience. If as a woman you do not have a relationship with God, then you don't fear him. You fear God. I said, it's the fear of God that will discipline your feet to walk in holiness. There are certain things you will not do as a woman if you fear God. Because the fear of God is like it's like it's like the voice of God in your heart that directs you to walk on the highway of holiness. There are some things you can't say, there is a way you can't behave because you fear God. When the fear of God dwells in your heart, there will never be complaint in your mouth. When women don't fear God, they, are, they become the channel for gossip. A woman that fears God will not gossip. Because she fears God. Women that fear God do not respond to hurt, to offenses by bitterness. Because they fear God. One of the signs of a woman that fear God is that she's very forgiving. Forgiveness is an expression of the fear of God. When, if you notice that you have a problem with bitterness, then it means your fear of God has been attacked. When a woman fears God, when the fear of God dwells in your heart, there is no room for bitterness. Any woman that fears God responds to every offense by forgiveness. No matter what he said, no matter what he's done, she says, I forgive you. Why? Because she fears God. A woman that fears God is a woman that, comes, that lives according to the standard of the word, not the standard of the world. She lives her life to glorify God, not to impress men. One of the reasons why so many women have been abused and used is because they are living their life to impress men. They dress to impress men. They walk to impress men. Everything they do is to get a man's attention. No, a woman that fears God lives to get God's attention. Not a man, God's attention. Because when she has the attention of God, God will make people have her attention. So the question is this when you live when you talk whose attention are you trying to have that's the fear of god the fear of god when it, no, listen to me one of the signs that eve did not fear god is that she disobeyed this obedience is an expression of fear of god wherever there is disobedience it is a sign that the fear of God is not present when the woman fears God she will not compromise with the instructions of God she will not compromise obedience to the spirit to be comfortable to the flesh We all shall be tempted. But most more women. Satan did not tempt Adam. He tempted Eve. He knew why. It was easier for her to fall than him. And it was easier for Adam to fall if Eve come. If the serpent came to Adam, Adam would have crushed his head. But if he comes to Eve, they will converse. And if Eve comes to Adam, Adam will not crush her head. Because she has already crushed his heart. Glory be to God. 
So what is the first sign? Some say the fear of God. Say again, say the fear of God. One more time, the fear of God. Develop this. Respond to the word of God by obedience. The reason why some women don't find fulfillment is because they are living their life for a man. You will never, you will never be fulfilled. Because there is nothing in a man to be faithful to you. Remember what I said. There is nothing in a man. If a man is faithful to you, it is God who made this so. There is nothing in them, in us. There is nothing. But a woman that fears God, she lives her life for God. She gives her body is a temple of God. She will never use her body to pursue worldly gain because she fears God. So many women have turned their bodies into instruments for pursuit of worldly gain because they know that if as a woman you think that your greatest weapon is your body, then you are foolish. You are stronger than that. That is for weak people. That's for, that's for weak people. I mean, you are 10 times strong, better than that. If when you are poor, you think the only thing that can give you money is your body, you are stupid. If when you need school fees, you think, if you think that God gave you this body as a weapon to, to acquire worldly gain, fame, then you have gone the wrong way. He gave you this body to glorify him. There is much more to you than the way you look like. There is much more to you. That is why but women that see their body as an instrument to pursue worldly gain, they put more emphasis on their body because they know I just need to pass. Let the man look me and that is all. When that is if that is how you see yourself, then you have reduced yourself under an animal. I said you are ten times better than that. Ten times. One million times. When you keep seeing yourself like that, you will start thinking that it is a man that can give value to your life. Any church, man of God, I want to marry. Man of God, I want to marry. It is us that should be praying for marriage, not you. Because he that findeth a wife. So you just stay you quiet with your favor. Let us be looking for you. But listen to this. That there is a deception in the world today that has made women think that they need a man to have value. It is a lie. Listen, he said, I shall make you a helper. Who needs the helper? Please. Did Eve say she was lonely? Eve was okay in heaven. It is Adam who complained. So, woman was created to meet the needs of man. Man was not created to meet the needs of woman. So who needs who? It is the man that needs the woman to meet his need. So you, you are the one. There is no way. He that findeth a wife, findeth what? Why did he not say she that findeth a husband? He will take a headache. Listen to me. As a daughter of Sarah, it is not a man that gives value to your life. It is the presence of God. Your, your value, the, what you should be proud of is that you have God. Not that you are married. Is that you have the presence of God in your life. That is why whether married or unmarried, as a daughter of Sarah, derive your value from the presence of God in your life. If God is in your life, it's a matter of time. He will give you everything he created for you. But now, many of you have been made to think that without a man you are useless. No, it is a man without you that is useless. He that findeth a wife, stop finding for husband. He that findeth a wife, obtaineth favor from the Lord. So there is a dimension of favor a man cannot experience until he sees a wife. But then there is no way they say that you will see favor. Because favor is you yourself. But when you now carry yourself with your favor, and you are not looking for people to donate it to, then you don't know who you are. I say you don't truly know who you are. Glory be to God. When you are so 
obsessed. Marriage, marriage, marriage. It is good to marry. But if you are marrying because you think that a man will add you value, my sister, you will suffer. You will see, pro you will see pain. I'm telling you because you will be shocked that when you marry the man, you will be shocked that he said that man is a child. You will be shocked. That the man that you thought will add you value is now you have become his mother. <laughs> is that not true for those who are married? Do not be deceived. And instead, what what one of the things that make men honor women is when they see their dependence on God. When you show so much concern to a man, he thinks you are cheap. Yes, but when you are so dedicated to God, He knows this. That is why you always hear a man say, "I want to go find some girl with church, Maria." Why? <laughs> the man said, "No, they church you. Very bad boys. You will never see them in Jesus' name." Some say she fears God. So one of the signs of the women of old was the fear that they had of God they feared God they feared God the second thing he said in verse 3 said verse 4 sorry he said in this way the holy women let us see it first Peter 3 verse 4 I want to show you who is a holy woman there verse, verse 5 is verse 5 okay for this is the way the holy women of the past who put their hope in God now stop there Number two, they are holy women. I'll show you something there that will shock you. Now, the way he described holiness there, I'm shocked. A holy woman is a woman that is submissive if she's married to her husband, according to scripture. But if she's not married, is a woman that is submissive to God. That is who is called a holy woman. Now, from this scripture, the second thing is that daughters of Sarah are women that are holy. It means these are women that are totally consecrated, separated from the well and dedicated to the Lord. Bible says in the house there are many vessels, but he that cleanses himself shall be a vessel for honor. It means the, the, the daughters of Sarah, we say number one, they are what? Number one, they are women that fear God. Number two, they are holy women. So I'm trying to explain to you that holiness in this aspect is that these are women that are consecrated. To be conse consecration means, holiness means separation from the well and dedication to the Lord. I'm going to ask you a question very soon. They are separated from the world. Which means holy women do not live according to the standard of this world. They live according to the standard of the world. They are holy women. Separated from the world. Dedicated to the Lord. But from this scripture, God began to describe. He said their holiness flows from a pure heart. It means holy women are women that desire the things of the Lord. Carnal women are women that desire the things of the world. If you are so focused on any time you have money, you want to buy something for your body, you are carnal. I'm not saying it's wrong, we'll get there, it's very good. But as a holy woman, your desire should be for the Lord, for the things of the Lord. A holy, he said, these were the holy women, women that pursued the Lord. Women, you can only pursue what you desire. The reason why so much women desire the things of this world is because they think that these things will give them value. It will never give you value. There is nothing material in this world that can add value to your life. The true value of a woman is a character. Is nothing. Don't be deceived, though. 
There is no mesh you can wear another woman cannot wear. That your difference is your character. All of you can enter a place dressed in the same kind of mesh. Maybe Indian mesh. Um, Louis Vuitton handbag. Wax wrapper. But what will make the difference of all of you there? Character. Character. Please, as a daughter of Sarah, let your desire be for the things of the Lord. He now described, he said, these holy women are not women that whose beauty is from painting. Already there. He said, let your beauty not be for the hard weather appearance by painting and all the like and wearing gold jewelry and flying cloth. He did not say you should not wear it. He was saying that don't lay emphasis on your outward appearance and see that is what makes you beautiful. He said what makes you beautiful before God and accepted before heaven is a char your character. So holiness in this aspect is, is, is the expression of your desire for the things of the Lord. Not the things of this world. have lost a good man because he couldn't buy them something. I mean, they wanted a hand back. Do you know, I'm sorry, you don't forgive me. Do you know how many women have compromised their stand for God with their body because they wanted something? To a point that we have women that indulge into sexual intercourse to have mesh. Yes, does it not happen? That is when they value. Listen to me. And a woman is the custodian of values in a nation. Not also women. Men can be crazy. If women become crazy, then the nation has spoil. Because women are the custodian of values, of culture. There are certain aspects of, of, of culture that only a woman can hold. So when the devil, that's why sit there. Listen, Satan targets women more than men from the days of Eve unto the day of Sarah and unto your own day. Women are the target because through women you will get the men. What do you think? There is you do you think a man can see a snake passing there and the man go and embrace a snake? No, let the snake enter again and come and stand. He will be the one following the snake. I must kiss you today. I love you. <laughs> I love you. I love you. I'm snake. It doesn't matter. Me, I'm anaconda. I love you. <laughs> His head has gone off. <laughs> Glory be to God. There is too much emphasis now. The daughters of Eve, the daughters of the well, they lay much emphasis on their appearance. That. <laughs> Let me tell you something. Here. He said, let your beauty not come from the painting of your face. Eh? Or gold jewelry. Now, the issue of painting of your face. Painting of the face was done by women that wanted to seduce men. From scripture, from Bible. The origin of painting was for the purpose of seduction. They painted their eyes with certain colors to attract the first woman that is known to paint in the Bible is Jezebel. A witch. Okay. You want scripture? You are not believing me? Second Kings chapter 9 verse 30. You will see what happened when Jehu was coming to kill Jezebel. See what she did. Second Kings chapter 9 verse 30. Read that. Then Jehu went to Jezreel when Jezebel heard about it, she painted her eyes, arranged her hair, and looked out of the window. She did what? Jehu was a prophet. Jezebel has been killing prophets. Now we know how she killed them. That is why Jehu never went up. He stayed down. He says, you send her down. I'm not going up there. When she heard that Jehu was coming, she painted her eye. Show me Revelation 2 verse 20. Hear what Jesus says about Jezebel. Nevertheless, I have this against you. You tolerate that woman Jezebel. Who calls herself a what? A prophetess here. By her teaching. 
she misleads my servants into sexual immorality how so jezebel is the spirit of seduction that operates by material things painting of eye walk it and what they call the other one the spirit of isiros the sp they try to kill samson they sent men he killed 1000 men they sent one woman a man killed 1000 men one woman put him down it's not the woman it's what was in her the spirit of jezebel that operates by seduction be very careful i keep repeating you will become a vessel for satan to destroy men if you see your value in your body he will use that body and cause the downfall of great men so the issue of painting eye and all those things that's bible oh yeah show me jeremiah chapter 4 30 what are you doing oh devastated one why dress yourself in scarlet and put on jewels of gold why shade your eyes with paint you adorn yourself in vain your lovers despise you they will kill you can't you say they will kill you <laughs> now bible and bible read now Give another simple version. Maybe that one is too hard. Is give it good news. I be GNT. <laughs> give us good news. See that Jerusalem. You talk about the woman. You are doomed. Why do you dress in scarlet? Why do you put on jewelry and paint your eyes? You are making yourself beautiful for nothing. Your lovers have rejected you and want to kill you. This means that whoever is attracted of you because of your physical appearance will one day reject you. He say your lovers it means at one time those people loved you but what made them to love you is your your painting and proverbs 31 30 tells us he said painting will fade away no matter the thickness of makeup it will last a night time there is no makeup that can last for a lifetime no matter the mascara the foundation and the roofing and the plastering it will last I should not be at you know, Abek. I'm just preaching. Glory be to God. <laughs> Hallelujah. It will not last a lifetime. It will not. You sit down for five hours and they put on a thing. Before you want to sleep, I'll let you again. Please, who is here you have ever made makeup and you wake up in the morning, you were still there? The lifespan of lifespan of makeup is one night. No matter the thickness, <laughs> it will never last a lifetime. But that's why God said, He said, But the beauty of a heart is unfading. It cannot fade away with time, it does not fade away with age, it does not fade away with trouble because it is of the heart, it is holiness. Now there's a problem. Man of God, are you saying we should not paint? I don't know. <laughs> Since you have begun, what should I say? In the beginning, it was not so. <laughs> In your heart now, there is a serious question. I will not answer that question. Go and pray. He did not say painting is a sin. He said painting for the purpose to gain attention and beauty will put you into trouble. That's what he said. He said you are painting yourself. It's not a sin, no. But he said you are doing it for nothing. Because the painting does not please God. That's what the scripture says. He said there is nothing about painting that makes you attractive before God. It does not move God at all. He said the beauty that God wants is the one of the heart. So whatever you do with your face is your problem. That he now says, but let me tell you, if you paint yourself, he said you are painting in vain, for your lovers will reject you. They will, they will see you and you look all very well and they follow you. But what brought a man to you is the way you look. You have entered problem. You will not look like that forever. You will not. Something will happen. You know pregnancy, where your face will fat. 
and everything just changed. <laughs> so we are seeing from scripture that Jezebel, this way, so painting was for the purpose of seduction. So the women of the world, they want to achieve beauty by the way they look. So they invest so much on their appearance. But the women of God, they know that their beauty radiates from the glory of God in their heart. So they invest much more in the Lord. It's the same thing for dressing. It's the same thing for dressing. He said it, is it uh, Proverbs 7 verse 10. Hear what he says there. Hear what God says. Then out came a woman to meet him, dressed like a prostitute. Noticed how she was dressed. Like a prostitute. Which means, according to scripture, there are certain way you dress that even God identifies you with prostitution. That is Bible I'm reading. Every time your dressing exposes your body, he said you are dressed like a because in the time of old prostitutes used to expose themselves the difference between women of character and those who were prostitutes in those times is that when you go to the market the prostitutes expose themselves that's how you knew them but now we live in a world that satan has taken over the world and he has corrupted the mind of people with television things that dresses that our grandmothers could not wear Today we even wear it and come to church and we are comfortable. I mean our grandmothers to know where. There are certain things that in the time of our grandmothers could not be seen. It, it could not be today. Some women wear it not because they want to seduce. Because they have been deceived by the image the world gives. I saw a lady one time she was wearing a very short skirt. I called her and said what is your problem? And she was okay. And the girl loved God. So I went and prayed and God said to me she is deceived. It's not every girl that wears a short skirt that is a prostitute. It's not every girl that wears a short skirt want to impress men. Some just think there is nothing wrong dressing like that. But the scripture tells us no. If you dress like that, you are identified as a... You are not old, but you can be identified as a prostitute. That is Bible. So a holy woman also understands there is a kind of way you do not dress like. Why? Because you are a holy woman. The beauty in your heart, the holiness in your heart should also be seen on your body. I wish somebody heard me here. I wish somebody heard me here. Are you hearing me? Are you sure? Are you happy with me? of Sarah are women with all a gentle spirit. That's First Peter 3. Show me verse 4 again. They are women with what? Gentle spirit. Gentle. Quiet and gentle spirit. Instead, it should be that of your inner self, the unfading beauty of a gentle spirit and quiet spirit which is of great worth in God's sight. Look at this. of Sarah, they are women that fear God, they are holy women, and number three, they are women that possess a gentle and quiet spirit. One of the problems that women have acquired from the world is loudness. He said, as a daughter of Sarah, have a quiet spirit. Have a quiet spirit. A quiet spirit is a spirit that has no room for anger. Bible says better to live in a desert than to live with an angry woman. Bible. Which means if you are a woman who has been attacked by the spirit of anger, Satan has attacked your marital favor. Proverbs 21 verse 9. Let us see it. Proverbs 21 9. He said better live in a desert than with a woman who likes to complain. Better to live on a corner of the roof than share a house with a quarrelsome wife. She talks a lot. She complains. Listen to me. 
when you have a gentle spirit you can't have a gentle spirit if you don't have forgiveness in your heart listen to this people will offend you on this earth a woman of gentle spirit is the one that responds to every offense by forgiveness a daughter of Sarah cannot, cannot say she's not talking to her neighbor you are not a daughter of Sarah a daughter of Sarah no matter the problem she will be the one that makes peace because they are the peacemakers that's the daughter of Sarah she responds to every offense by forgiveness that's a gentle spirit Bible said better to live than with a chorus why? When, they, when too many women have been attacked by the demon called bitterness bitterness is a cancer that eats the joy out of a home bitterness why? and most times bitterness is sponsored by broken expectation but let me tell you something he who does not expect can be disappointed when you expect so much from a man you'll be disappointed that's wisdom so much you feel like oh you are marrying one don't watch Nigerian female your husband is not Ramsey Noir that na film you want a real life so there are some kind of expectation that some women have when they get into marriage or in their natural life when it's not fulfilled they become bitter and nobody says when a woman become bitter it's a better you go and live in the desert of bitterness is what is complain every time you complain so much it means you have become bitter you complain about your parents you complain about your husband you complain about your children you complain about your house you complain about your body i don't like my head i don't like my face i don't like you don't bitterness bitterness attacks women more than men i'm telling you bitterness you can have two women that are in the same church are not talking together in the same church they can hold a hand and sing in choir after they remove their hand and they go and they don't talk <laughs> bitterness a daughter of sarah expresses forgiveness wherever she goes because she has a gentle and a word a choir spirit so there is a question what kind of spirit do you have Show me the same prophet 21. See verse 19. See what it says in verse 19. Better to live in a desert than with a quarrelsome and ill-tempered angry wife. Show me um, chapter 25 verse 24. Same proverbs. Better to live in a corner of the roof than share a house with a quarrelsome wife. The same thing four times in one, in one book. Show me chapter 27 verse 15. A quarrelsome wife is like a constant dripping on a rainy day. She's very Bible, she's very boring. Might be you are the one that have chased your husband out of the house. I don't know what I have done. You talk a lot. In the name of Jesus, shut up. But I be quiet. Yes, my sister, be quiet. You have a gentle heart. Be careful. Are you following me here? daughters of Eve are proud you must not talk about everything there are some things you should let go not because you are wrong but because you are daughter of Sarah leave it it's not every argument you should take leave it you, there is something greater than winning an argument it's winning a soul if an argument can make you lose a marriage listen all when women always say, man of God, I don't have married life ever, I want to ask you one question. As there is there no man that has ever come to you to marry you, they have come. What drove them away? Before you mention Satan, check your character. It is easy to blame Satan and generational curse, but we have characters that the Bible says, if, if a woman has this kind of character, it's let the man go and live in that desert. That's what the Bible said. But no man can resist a woman of a gentle spirit. Why? Because she's like a pillow that relaxes the head when you sleep. The nerves are calm. But a woman with a loud spirit is a stone, not a pillow. Don't be always, don't be ready to fight all the time. You are bigger than, you are, we are no longer worldly, we are not in Christ. Hey, hey, hey. Ah, they go, you don't know me. 
before I can't just begin the crazy. You know, the crazy day, my I go show. You go see me. Nah, 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 nah. Let go. If they insult you, don't respond. Why? I'm a daughter of Sarah. You are bigger than that. Pastor, let me just one cush. Pastor, I beg you, just one cush, one girl. Just one cush, then we stop the thing. <laughs> you know, most women are known for being mouthy, true of us. Be careful. Satan is using that to destroy your lives. Life and death are in the power of the tongue. If you have a good mouth, speak good words, not bad words. A daughter of Sarah do not provoke people. A daughter of Sarah, she stirs up men unto good work. She doesn't stir up people for beating. When she is present, if there is a problem, she doesn't want to say, let us leave it. But there are some women, if they are in the market, they hear this boy in the compound, they come back at six. They say, now, they say, boy, me, that was I. Mu go there. Now, who's has? Nine o'clock. Never. Come on, come on, come on. Say, wait till we happen. Hey, hey, hey. We'll go finish our here today. Nine o'clock. Mommy, go sleep. Leave them. Or they go and sleep. They don't look time. Five never reach. Five never reach. Why? Because they want five at the five. At the year cock. They don't come one time. Never. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Some people are seeing themselves what I've said. Amen. Please don't be like that. You hear what I said? What did I say? Number four, daughters of Sarah. Oh, I love this. They are women of service. Or what? Somebody say service. If you study Genesis 24, verse 12 to 15, you will see the way. Um, um, when Abraham sent his servant to go and look for a wife for Isaac, you hear what the man said? The man said, Oh God, hear the prayer. He said, Oh God, may the woman whom I ask for water gives me water be the wife you have chosen for Isaac. So he now went to the well. There were more than 20 women. He asked for water. He said, And Rebecca came forth and gave him. Bible said, And the man looked at her. To see if she is the one that God has chosen. This means wives were identified by their ability and willingness to serve. Let me tell you this advice. Never despise an opportunity to serve as a woman. You don't know who you may be serving. It is service that gives you access into the heart of men and the heart of God. Never despise never ever despise never despise never despise by just cleaning a table somebody can be interested in you I'm just I mean just cleaning a table people just you don't know them you just say let me clean you don't a woman should be ready to serve at all time why it was a is Adam says she shall be called woman for she was taken out of man and the Bible says in 1 Corinthians 11 verse 8 he said woman was created for man so the purpose of her creation was to serve God or to serve man now you need to understand as a woman do not despise opportunity to serve no woman should sit like that I do do something not just in terms of work in terms of service you get into a place a child is crying. You cannot even ask what is wrong. You are quiet. You don't know. Listen to this. Many of you have lost opportunities because you could not serve. One of the expressions of the humility of a woman is her ability to serve even strangers. And a woman that can serve, even if she's a bad woman, her service will open her doors that your prayer will not open. I'm telling you, for a woman, service is stronger than prayer. Yes. Which man does not be a woman who serves him? Look at the way a wife was chosen for Isaac. He said, The woman that will give me water should be the one. Why did he say the most beautiful woman? He, they were, he, he knew that if this woman can serve, she will make a good wife. If you are a bad woman, you cannot be a good wife. 
if you were a bad girl, you would not be a good woman. So it all begins the way you are brought up. There is no special anointing to become a good wife. If you are a bad woman, you'll be a bad wife. That's why it is not the wife that fears God, it is the woman that fears God. If you say only wife, then it means unmarried women will not come. It's about woman here. They are married or unmarried, be ready to serve at all times and everywhere. If you study John chapter 4, there's a woman there that had how many husbands? Five. See something. She was talking with Jesus. That's John chapter 4, verse 15 to 18. And Jesus asked her, He said, He said, The woman came to fetch water, and Jesus said, Give me water to drink. Yeah, the woman. She said, uh -uh. How can you ask for me water? You are a Jew, I'm a Samaritan. I don't understand. Did Jesus ask for Bible class? Did he ask for geography? Give me water. Argument began. When she started arguing, Jesus now said, Go and call your husband. Then she said, Ah, master, I have five husbands. What was the problem? Jesus wanted to demonstrate to her that the reason why no man can stay with you is because you don't serve. This is me, a stranger. I've asked for water, you're already arguing. Means you can kill your husband in the house. That's why he asked her, Go and call your husband. And she said, I have no husband. Now, she said, I have no husband, but she was living with a man. And she came to carry water for him. But she said, I have no husband. So that woman's problem that one woman had had five husbands, not five boyfriends, is a Bible. Five husbands. It means something attracted her to men and something took her away. What was that thing? She was unable to serve. Just see one, she's fine. Oh, you just manage she's in the house. Cook. Oh, I can cook. I can cook. Oh, God, oh. Where? I can cook. Oh, gosh, you don't have a. House girl, house girl, and girl, house girl, you house girl. <laughs> uh, service. Oh, take your dresses to the I can't wash them. You can't wash singlet, singlet. You that grew up in Bekondo, you can't wash singlet. You don't know you. <laughs> Wait here, pull. You talk grammar now. They are never waiting here, <laughs> Some say service. Say it again. Say service. Now, service is an expression of submission. The one you serve is the one you submit to. Oh, the woman that fears God. She's a woman of service. She she's hardworking. Today, you see a young girl wake up in the morning. At nine, and she put this and begin to wash. What's the other thing? Big brother, something. Big brother, what? Big brother, Africa, Nigeria. Yes, big brother, Nigeria. And you start watching from nine to twelve. What is happening? When you go to the village, you see our grandmothers of eighty. Five o'clock, they are going to the farm. Young girls sit down and put TV and paint their nails. I say, Ask me, I want a husband. I want a man that is tall, that is yellow, that is, that is, that is, you know, he's a bit fat. He has a car. Eh, well, eh, well, eh. Who's where? Where? <laughs> if, if you were God, will you answer that prayer? Do you think God can take one of his good sons and give you the way? <laughs> Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Number five. I love this. Daughters of Sarah are women of faith. Women of what? Somebody have faith. Show me Hebrews 11. Verse 11 to 12. Through faith also, Sarah herself received strength to conceive seed. Hey, show me verse 35 of the same Hebrews. Still speaking of faith, verse 35. Yeah. Women received their dead raised to life again. Look at this. Every daughter of Sarah is a woman of faith. He says Sarah was 90 years old, but by faith she received 
meant to conceive it means a daughter of Sarah cannot be held in the bondage of the enemy because her faith will deliver her from Satan is, listen to me when you study scripture women have always been the target read through the bible the greatest people that Jesus healed were women in Luke chapter 13 he said there was a woman in the temple that she was bent over by an evil spirit what happened she was what the bible says the woman was bent over and she could in no way raise herself up it means she tried to stand up but the evil spirit press her down when an evil spirit is oppressing a woman she cannot rise up financially she cannot rise up spiritually she cannot rise up maritally this woman was oppressed for 18 years why because satan knew that through the woman there is a promise after that eve made a mistake god prophesied and said he said woman in your seed we bruise the head of the serpent not the seed of the man the seed of the woman there is a promise in your life there is a promise on your destiny he said your seed shall bruise the head of the serpent we speak about mighty women like Deborah that deliver nations from the hands of Satan you are not a normal woman you are not a natural woman you are supernatural you have the fire of God you are a daughter of faith lift your hand and shout yeah listen to me when you are a daughter of faith the devil cannot hold you down if satan touch your child you say satan you are messing with the wrong woman you wear your old kaba you tie your head you carry your child's picture you cannot play with the daughter of Sarah they are women of faith what they want they get because they know how to pray they know how to intercede they know how to fast I prophesy in the name of Yahweh whatever you have prayed before I agree with you you will see an answer listen to me child of God we have not heard that a woman at 90 could have a child but when Sarah believed in the Lord the child came forth there was a man called Elkanah he married a woman called Hannah there was no child the man was not bothered but Hannah went to the temple she was a daughter of Sarah she went and prayed while she was praying the child Came. There was a woman called Elizabeth and angel appeared to her husband. The husband argued prophecy. When the angel came to Elizabeth, she did not argue the prophecy because she's a woman of faith. When the angel came to Mary, Mary did not argue because she's a woman of faith. There is something about your life, something about your destiny. You are not a non entity, you cannot be wasted. You are the light of the world, you are the salt of the earth. You don't serve a dead God. You serve a mighty God. It's the same yesterday. It's the same today. It's the same forever. When God say yes, no man can say no. When God lifts you up, no man can bring you down. God is on your side. Power is on your side. Grace is on your side. God is on your side. God is on your side. Lift your hands, yeah. Somebody say Holy Ghost power. Somebody say Holy Ghost power. Listen to me. If a demon try to touch you in your dream, don't wake up and cry. You are a woman of faith. Wake up in your room and put your hand on your stomach. I pray for somebody here. You cannot be attacked again. They cannot overcome you again. I don't know the charm. I don't know the witchcraft. I don't know the power that is attacking your life. You are delivered today. I say you are delivered today. For a daughter of Sarah, there is nothing as impossible. A woman of 90 got a child. I don't know what you are trying to have. And the doctor say you cannot have. And people 
Bible say you cannot have. And Satan say you cannot have. I prophesy as a man of God in the name of Yahweh. You will have it. I say you will have it. Whatever you desire, you will see it. There can be no failure for you. Lift your hands, shout Holy Ghost power. Listen. The Bible says, it says women receive their dead raised to life. Satan killed a family member. The woman said, I will not bury. She cried, Antanakosa. Hey, women that can pray for their husband. Women that can pray for their children. Girls that can pray for their parents. We are looking for women that will say, I will pray. Bible say Rebecca was pregnant and there was a problem. She did not go to a herbalist. He said she went to God. She said there is a trouble in my womb. A woman of faith. It's a woman that goes to God in times of trouble. It's a woman that goes to God in time of lack. As a daughter of Sarah, where you need house rent, you do not call a man. You call Jehovah. As a daughter of Sarah, when you need school fees, you do not call a boyfriend you call Jehovah I prophesy in the name of Yahweh God will honor you lift your hands shout yes sir somebody shout fire 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 lift your hands shout yeah Listen, he says Sarah at 90 receive faith to conceive. You want to do a business of 90 million, receive faith to do it. Uh, you want to travel abroad, risk I am a shah. The only, the only asset for a woman of a daughter of Sarah, it is faith. If you don't have money, no problem. If you don't have a husband, no problem. If only you have faith for with man, this is impossible. But with God, everything is possible. I prophesy. Open your hand, open your hand for every woman here that has been believing God for something particular. I prophesy in the name of Jesus. Before this year comes to an end, it shall become a testimony. It shall be 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 a testimony. Shout I'm a daughter of Sarah. Listen. The time is not more to be afraid. You can no longer be afraid. You cannot allow the devil to destroy your life. You are you there is something you carry a fire. The time has come, I see in the spirit that God will be raising women from everywhere. Women that will rise up as presidents, rise up as governors, they will rise up as prophetesses. They shall be coming from everywhere. Great millionaires in business. You are one of them. There is an anointing upon your life. You cannot be killed like that. You cannot die like that. Leave the house. Shut yes, sir. Listen, he said, Jesus said. In, he said the woman was for 13 years 13, 13 years he said she was tied, why? why did Satan tie her? if Satan can tie a woman he has tied a nation when Rebecca was pregnant she went before God and God said there are two nations in your womb not two baby Eve give birth to children Sarah give birth to nations as a daughter of Sarah what you carry in your womb is not only for Kumba. It's Alamashana Yaha. You are carrying an anointing for a nation. You are not giving birth to a baby. You are giving birth to a nation. In business, a nation. This means as a daughter of Sarah, whatever you do, it does not affect only a place. It affects an entire nation. Can I prophesy to a woman here? I see you in the next three months. 
is an idea in business uh, that God is going to give you. Uh, you will take over in the name of Jesus. He says, let me give you one prophecy. He said, your seed shall bruise the head of the serpent. <laughs> Not the seed of the man. It means the solution of the problems in the world is in the womb of a woman. It can be an idea. It can be a vision. It can be a prophecy. It can be a dream. There is something you carry that we Satan's head. That is why he attacked a woman. He said the woman was sick for an issue for 12 years. He attacked another woman. He tied her for 18 years. He killed another young girl. Why is Satan always attacking women? Because he knows. But I want to prophesy that that time is over. I don't know what attacked you before. I don't know what held your mother. What held your grandmother. What held your sister. He shall not hold you again. He shall not hold you again. He shall not hold you again. Somebody is breaking out. Somebody is breaking out. Somebody say Lord. Somebody say Lord. Somebody say Lord. Set me on fire. Somebody say Lord. Set me on fire. There are women of faith. When she wants to go for an interview, she does not try to come and seduce the director. She carries her documents. Zelia Shadre. Tala Tala into the Agaha. When she enters the place, in her heart she is talking Leko Sharia Kadaziga. Vele Vele Sukitanda. She is a woman of intelligence. You are a woman of faith. You cannot before your time you are a woman of faith you cannot be barren forever you are a woman of faith you cannot die in affliction you are a woman of faith your seed will bruise the head of the serpent 